Now, the Catholic priesthood has received much criticism in recent years, so when a devout Catholic leaves the priesthood and converts to Islam, it raises much interest. Well, our next guest did just that. After being a Catholic priest in Britain, he left to become a teacher and studied in Egypt, where he converted to Islam and became a Muslim. He is now in Ireland to spread the word of the Quran, and he joins us in studio this morning. Good morning to you, Idris Tafi. Good morning to you. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Okay. That's, the, that's the Muslim greeting, a greeting of peace. Okay, tell us a bit. You were a Catholic priest for nine years, was it? W with my training, yes, yes, yes. Why did you decide to convert? Well, if we had kind of two hours or a whole series, I could perhaps tell people. It, it's, it, it happened through, through people, through events. Through, when I left the priesthood, I, I didn't leave the priesthood because I wanted to change my religion, that's for sure. I had no plan of, of leaving the Catholic Church, none. But when I left the priesthood, it was a big decision to make, and it was upsetting, and it left me feeling very low. And I looked for a holiday, so I needed a good holiday, but I had no money. So I went to the internet and got the cheapest holiday I could find, and the cheapest holiday was a holiday to Egypt. Now, I knew nothing about Egypt. I'd never met a Muslim in my life. And all I knew about Muslims was what the television told me, that they chop your hands off and that they blow themselves up and that they hit ladies. So I went to this Muslim country not knowing what to expect, except sunshine. And I went there and, and as God is my judge, that week changed my life really because I met Muslims for the first time and found that they weren't these sword-waving fanatics <coughs> that we see on the TV, but they were good, honest people. And like, like Irish people, Muslim people, you know, they, they go out to work in the morning to put food on the table for their kids to eat. They pray. They're ordinary people with, with a religious dimension very much. And, and so, for example, I'll give you an example of one Muslim I met. I met a little boy, and I talk about him in every talk I give. And this little boy was selling bananas on the street. And he had no shoe, just little plastic flip-flops and a very old, tired gown, you know. And he greeted me the first morning. He said, "Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, with a big smile on his face. And I learned each day from my hotel walking past him to say, Zayak, Zayak in Arabic means, how are you, how are you doing? And he'd reply, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God. And that week, it, it touched my heart. I didn't learn much about Islam, but I learned for sure that Muslims weren't what I was being told back home. And then a long journey, of, perhaps a year started of... Uh, of meeting, I got a job teaching. You know, I needed work. I had no work, so I got a job in a school in London. So your holiday? Oh, you came back. I came you back. Still felt strongly. Still, uh, well, I, I still had no plan to change my religion. I was happy, being, perfectly happy being Catholic. And in fact, in all the talks I give, you know, I've been giving talks this week in Ireland. I always start my talks by saying, if anyone's come here tonight to hear me criticise the church or the pope. Or Christianity, you've come to the wrong talk. Well, why know? did you leave the priesthood? Though? What, 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 what made that decision after eight years there as a priest? Okay, well, the job, I liked the job. And it's a great privilege, you know, for people to let you into their lives, to, to, to be with their parents when they're dying, to baptize their children, to marry them, to hear their confessions. It's a very privileged life. And I, I like to think I was good at my job, you know? The people liked me, I liked them. But my heart somehow just wasn't happy. There was something missing. And even though I, I really enjoyed what I was doing, I felt lonely and unhappy. So it, it, it took a lot of, you, you know how, how priests are put, held up yeah. by Catholics on a pedestal almost. And it was a big decision to make. I told my family, and my family, of course, my family loved me, so that they were upset. But they said, well, we support you in whatever you do. So as I said, I had no plan, no plan to change my religion at all. But w w can I tell you about the job? I, I got a yeah. job teaching. And in the school where I was in London, there were lots of Muslim kids. A very naughty school I was in. Very naughty. They had every wrong thing you could imagine they did. But I, I liked it. I liked the kids. And they liked me. And, and it, I was teaching them about religions. All my life I'd taught, uh, as a Dallas Salle brother, I, I'd taught about the Catholic faith. Well, for the first time I was in a state school teaching about Islam, Judaism, all, all the religions. Well, I didn't know much about them, so every night I had to get the books out and read, you know? And the more I read, and the more I read, and the more, the more I liked what I read about Islam. And, and the kids in school were having their effect on me. Ramadan came, you know, the holy month yeah, of Ramadan, yeah. of fasting. Yeah. And they came to me and they said, Sir, it's Ramadan and we've got nowhere to pray. 
and your room is the only room in the school with a carpet. You know, you could call it a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. I need a carpet to yeah. pray. Can we pray in your room? So I said, of course you can pray in my room. So they kept, but I said, but I have to ask the headmaster first. So I went to the head and I said, these boys, Muslim boys, would like to pray in my, in my classroom. Is it okay? He said, fine. But you have to sit at the back because knowing these kids, they could steal the carpet. Good. <laughs> so I sat, I sat at the back for the whole month of Ramadan. And for the first few days, I just marked my books and prepared my lessons and paid no attention. Then as the days went by, I, I'd look at, oh, they're doing this now. Are oh, they doing this now? And I went, I secretly went to the internet and I learnt the prayers in Arabic they were saying. It was a slow process. You a very slow process. And it, and it is a lovely religion and, and there is a lot of peace and there's a, there is a lot of love espoused. Yeah. But how do you reconcile and equate that with the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of fundamentalists who go to the other extreme and there is no give and take. It is do it our way or we'll kill you. Okay, well the way, the way I'd answer that would be that this island of Ireland is no stranger to extremism and fanaticism done in the name of so-called religion. And, and the things that happened in the north in this island bore no relation to the message of Christianity, of love and peace. Well, in the same way, things are happening in the world. You, you know, the other day there was a thing on the TV, and it said that this young girl, this Christian girl in Afghanistan had been killed because she's Christian. And when I saw it, I, I, I was sad. I wasn't angry, I was sad and thought, what? What a shame that people misunderstand so much. And what a shame that people watching this think, here we go again, Islam and Muslims. If you want to re meet, meet real Muslims, come with me to my house, to my home in Alexandria, to my building. On the ground floor, you'll meet Ahmed and his wife and kids. On the next floor, Mahmoud and his wife and kids. On the next floor, Sharif. Ordinary people who pray, no hand grenade in their pockets, you know, no true. suicide yeah. belt. Yeah. Yeah. It is very much a religion of peace, but unfortunately, people who shout loudest Get heard make obviously. news. Yeah. That makes news. Mm -hmm. A little old lady teaching her granddaughter how to recite the Quran doesn't make, yeah. doesn't make the news. What type of reaction do you get, though, from Irish people? I mean, you give, you give speeches in Ireland. What type of reaction do you get? I mean, I've had a lovely reaction this week. Do you know? Can, can I mention Jerry Ryan show? Of last can, yeah, last yeah. Friday, I was on the Jerry Ryan show, and a lady phoned in, and she said, "I'd like to ask a question." She said, "Has Idris Taufi come to Ireland?" to convert the whole of Ireland to Islam. <laughs> and I said, my dear, I haven't come here to convert anyone to anything. I've come for two reasons. One, I've come to encourage the Muslim community to be good Muslims. And two, I've come to encourage tolerance and dialogue and understanding between Muslims and those who aren't. So after that radio show, the first thing I did after praying at Konsky Mosque was we went and we met the, the Anglican Archbishop of Dublin to say, Salaam alaikum to you, sir. Christians and Muslims are friends. We have so much in common. We want to, we want to work together as people of faith. Uh, while I've been here, I've met the mayors of the Lord Mayor of Dublin, the Lord Mayor of Cork. He gave me this little lapel pin, which I promised to wear for the show today in Cork well City. The Mayor of Limerick, the Mayor of Galway yesterday. And telling them, through meeting them, telling them that Muslims in Ireland want to be part of this Irish society they live in. And hopefully, hopefully it'll work and hopefully everyone will some opinions. society can come Inshallah, together. Inshallah, as we say, God willing. Thank you very much, it was a pleasure meeting you Thank this you. morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much.